Yo, what is up everybody, and welcome back to another Madden 20 online CFM game. We are about to officially move on to Season 5 of the Premier Madden League. First things first, we gotta take care of some formalities, like the offseason, the NFL Draft, and the preseason. We're gonna do all of that today, and we start off with the offseason where... As per usual, in an online CFM, there were not many big names in free agency for our Dolphins to chase. In these online CFMs, most guys do re-sign their big name players. Also, our Dolphins don't really have much room for growth. The way we built up this roster in the first four seasons of the CFM, we now perhaps have the single best complete roster in this entire league. So what we mainly did in free agency was try to hunt for some depth and a little bit of fun, including the signing of Taysom Hill. You guys are going to see we're going to try to use Taysom Hill in a little bit of a joker role. It's hard to replicate the Taysom Hill role that he plays for the Saints in a CFM, but... You guys will see, we'll try to mess around with Hill a little bit. We have some fifth-year options, but to be completely honest with you guys, these fifth-year options aren't really a big deal. Now, we would have done that regardless for Derek Brown and Bryce Hall, but um, what we really want to go over are trades. Yes, our Dolphins have pulled off a couple of trades, including for an offensive lineman, Zach Bolton, who is actually like a 79 overall. Those numbers are never right. We pull off a trade second and third round picks for Jamison Crowder, who is a superstar wide receiver in this league. So we're going to have Chris Godwin, DeAndre Hopkins, and Jamison Crowder as our wide receivers. And we traded away our backup running back, our fourth round pick, and we swapped first round picks with the Seattle Seahawks. That gives us pick number seven of the draft. Now, once again, our Dolphins do not have many places to really improve roster-wise. So, even a rookie at the 7th overall pick, it's going to be hard for us to get someone that, you know, is a day one starter and is really going to do things. I think still the weakest point of our roster is the offensive line. Considering how we started with literally zero starters on the offensive lines, um... I guess it's no big surprise that, you know, we haven't fully built up the O-line to, like, its max potential compared to, you know, perhaps the linebacking core of the Miami Dolphins, which is insane. Speaking of, we just drafted a linebacker, Noah Sewell, out of, I believe, LSU. This man... He is going to be some pretty decent depth. Let's say Jerome Baker or Raekwon McMillan get injured. We could plug this guy in. Our Dolphins just have that kind of luxury. Like last season in the draft even. Where we didn't have many positions to fill up. And we drafted two tight ends with our first three picks. That's just something that we had you know the ability to do based on you know how complete the roster is otherwise and we still have like a decent amount of cap space we still have like 10 to 15 mil to maybe pull off one more big trade so you know we made the trade with the seahawks that was partially to help the seahawks get themselves a backup quarterback they really wanted a backup quarterback so i was like all right i'll help you out help you out man like i got this pretty i literally had the best backup quarterback in the entire league in Desmond Ritter, so I sent him over there as we draft an offensive lineman with our third round pick, and this guy can actually be a starter for us. I said there aren't many guys that we could plug and play from this draft. Well, Turner Car Corcoran, I'm not going to try to pronounce that name ever again, because we don't talk about offensive linemen, but um, this guy's a beast, man, looking at his stats, so I think we'll maybe move him to right tackle, and then maybe move Austin Blight back to guard, because that's where Austin Blight originally was at the guard position, so we'll maybe mix that up some yeah, we got Jamison Crowder, a wide receiver, and that's actually going to bump Jakeem Grant to wide receiver number four, which I feel like has been a little bit overdue for our Miami Dolphins. Like, Jakeem Grant loved the guy, but, you know, at some point, we have to, you know, continue building the wide receiving core, and Jakeem Grant has, like, a spare piece, fine, we could maybe still use him in, you know, a couple of jet sweeps and stuff like that, but, you know, we have to see what the potential of our offense is with, you know, three, three true superstar wide receivers even though Chris Godwin's not a superstar you know you guys saw the way he played for us in the second half of the season in the postseason he's a legitimate number two to DeAndre Hopkins he could be a number one if we didn't have D-Hop obviously we still do have DeAndre Hopkins we franchise tag D-Hop officially so he's back on a one year almost 19 million dollar contract and yes, this is season five of the CFM and the last season of the Premier Madden League this year, of course, like, we'll be back in Madden 21. For the people who are wondering, yes, you know, this league will be back in Madden 21, and as long as they'll have me back, which I think I've been a pretty good member of the CFM, right? We we play chill, we play sim, like, I'm sure they'll have me back, right? So, 
don't worry about this uh, series going away anytime soon because I love this stuff man like you guys can tell like this is all I've been uploading nowadays to be completely honest with you guys because you know other modes in Madden just don't interest me that much obviously like when the new Madden comes around we'll mess around with like regs and stuff like that a little bit more maybe Mutt honestly Mutt still doesn't interest me that much but um yeah, I really do love the CFM stuff, and you guys love the CFM stuff, so, you know, we're definitely going to rock it out Season 5, so, our Miami Dolphins are coming off of, you know, a bit of a heart-crushing loss. I'm not going to say a heartbreaking, just crushing, because, you know, the way we lost that Super Bowl, the way we played in that Super Bowl, just, you know, it I know somebody said in the comment section, one or two guys, like, it didn't feel right from the start, and it really didn't, man, like, I feel like the entire postseason... We just came in with the wrong offensive mentality. It's Jabril Cox, man. Jabril Cox really has turned into an out-of-nowhere superstar for our Miami Dolphins. When I drafted him, I was like, all right, you know, this is a guy that maybe will start at outside linebacker on day one. And, you know, we'll see what happens with him. We'll see if we could develop into, like, just like a piece. I did not expect him to be a star or even superstar. Now he's, like, an essential part of our defense. You guys saw the way he was playing in the postseason, you know, especially in rushing defense. I feel like he does such a good job of setting the edge for us. So, you know, that's just the rich getting richer, I suppose. So this is Jay Butterfield in completion to a wide open Jamison Crowder. And of course, this is preseason. This is week two of preseason. I probably should have mentioned that because I don't think I showed it before. Well, it says it at the bottom there, preseason week two. So um, there you go, context clues. <laughs> so um, we're going to show um, the preseason games in this video, two, three, and four, week one of preseason. Um, it was actually against the Giants, funny enough. So um, it would have been a Super Bowl rematch, but um, the Giants user, he wasn't around. So um, that game, we don't worry about that. So we just move on to our game against the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, you know, it's funny that we are playing the Chiefs and the Giants back to back to start preseason because these were our last two opponents in the postseason. Actually, no, two of our last three opponents, the Chiefs, were the divisional round. Either way, the two like big playoff teams that we went against. So. You know, kind of funny the way that works out. Kind of funny the way that worked out for us. Jamison Crowder downfield for the touchdown. Obviously, you can tell I'm trying to get a Crowder involved. So, this is the second game of preseason. So, the starters are playing for the entire first half. But you'll notice our Miami Dolphins, along with the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, are missing a couple of key guys. Like, the Chiefs, uh, for some reason, they have Burrow and Mahomes. So, uh, <laughs> they can rest Patrick Mahomes and put in the number one pick in real life. In the CFM, though, I don't think Burrow's that good. But, um... Yeah, so for our Miami Dolphins, uh, Khalil Tate's not playing, so that's why we got Jay Butterfield at quarterback, Saquon Barkley's sitting out, and DeAndre Hopkins. And then on the defensive end, we're resting Caden Stearns. They're being put in bubble wrap. We're not really trying to get those guys injured because they are probably, you know, not only the four key pieces of our team, probably the four highest overall players on our team, so... Don't want to lose them in, you know, preseason. So, yeah, um, back to what I was saying earlier. This is the last season of the league. So, you know, salary cap, that stuff doesn't worry. Like, managing the salary cap for next season, which is great because Khalil Tate, this is year four in the final year of his contract as, I believe, a fourth-round pick from the 2020 NFL draft. He's due for a new contract, and I'm pretty sure he's going to be asking for, like, Patrick Mahomes' money. So, like, you know, some of the salary cap stuff that we've done has been on purpose, the way we've managed the salary cap, like, you know, trading for Saquon Barkley and signing him to a new contract, something we never would have done. We actually had to worry about the salary cap for season six and seven and all that stuff. So, you know, strategic stuff out here. <laughs> as we are going to try to kick a 59-yard field goal, I think we're going against the wind so um yeah that rain not a good mix but i mean it's preseason perfect time to try something out like that and perfect time to blow a coverage nothing new like we did that in the super bowl so clearly something we got to continue to work on so um yeah um that's i got some people are saying this is the last dance in the comment section of the super bowl video i guess this is our quote unquote last dance season you want to call it we'll try to hit like an mj game six game winner in the super bowl or something like that getting to the super bowl three seasons in a row is definitely going to be a tough task i'm not going to lie but the good news is we got you know like i said perhaps the best team out here and you know <laughs> it's it's kind of like I wish we had more team building to do with, you know, these Dolphins, oddly enough. Like, you know, the team building aspect of CFM is so much fun to me, but I'm perfectly fine with having a quote-unquote super team at this point. As um, This is quite the fun back-and-forth game with the Kansas City Chiefs, man. The Chiefs, we played them every single season in the preseason in the CFM, and we played once in the regular season and once in the playoffs. But, like, um, the Chiefs user is definitely one of my favorite guys to play in the CFM, so it's kind of cool we play in the preseason because we usually, you know, like, it's just, you know, 
play styles and stuff like that. He's got a cool play style. I you know, respect his play style and all that. We just have fun games. So we're having another one out here. Joe Burrow and the boys trying to take the lead here. 6.45 left in the fourth quarter. And Burrow with a dime to Ferguson. This tight end Ferguson's kind of been giving us the business. So amongst the Chiefs not playing, no Kelsey, no Tyreek Hill. As Burrow gets whacked around the two-point conversion, that is no good. So, you know, there's not many, you know, rookies we're really watching even in preseason. Uh, obviously, we have our s number seven overall pick, Noah Sewell. But otherwise, you know, as, man, Jay Butterfield out here <laughs> in the rain. Sails that one to the right and the way from Jakeem Grant. And then watch this one. Next play. Come on, Butterfield. What are you doing to me? Now, Jay Butterfield, I believe he's like a 67 overall. But when he throws the accurate pass, you got to help him out. So one of the cool things we did with our Miami Dolphins for Season 5 is I did bring a couple of old friends back. Number one, behind Saquon Barkley, we have not only Kalen Balaj back on a one-year deal once again, but we also have Kenny and Drake. Both of our, you know, 1A and 1B at the running back position as Noah Sewell gets to stop here on third down from season one. That's back. And then we have, whew, um, Al, what's his name? Albert Wilson at wide receiver. So Albert Wilson was our number two at wide receiver along with Devontae Parker and Jakeem Grant in season one. So we have Albert Wilson not going to be starting or anything like that. He'll probably be wide receiver number five based on the way he's playing in preseason so far. He's actually doing pretty well for us. So, you know, Albert Wilson was just going to be a preseason body, but we might actually keep him. So, um, good for him for earning his spot on the roster. You see, we've been passing a lot with Jay Butterfield in preseason. I don't know if you guys have noticed, like, you know, I never really run a lot in the preseason. It's just like, you know, I'm, I, I'd rather just pass the ball, especially in preseason. I mean, I'm just, I'm just trying to try new plays out try concepts out and especially you know how much of a dud we hold on a second Taysom Hill in at quarterback and Taysom Hill for the go-ahead touchdown to Jamison Crowder hmm put that one in the backlog as something to keep in mind for the regular season Taysom Hill in the wildcat throwing passes yeah, man, we didn't sign Taysom Hill just to chill on the bench as we injured that beast tight end. I hope for the Chiefs' sake he's not hurt too bad because, you know, him and Kelsey could be a nice one-two duel. How about Raekwon McMillan skying up for the interception? Matched up against a wide receiver in man coverage. We had the over-the-top, but uh, still, shout-out to Raekwon McMillan. So, um, quite the hell game in our first actual preseason game we played, and we do barely come out with the victory thanks to Taysom Hill. Jamison Crowder in his quote-unquote day Debut, doing pretty well so you know like I said as much as I love Jakeem Grant we gotta you know see what Jamison Crowder brings to the table he's about an 85 overall um on Austin Blythe out there uh, that was him playing at right tackle so we're probably gonna move him to right guard at some point here so we move on to play Trevor Lawrence and D. Pittsburgh Steelers for week three of preseason and of course week three of preseason as things get a little bit nutty here is the real dress rehearsal for the regular season this is when the starters play three quarters now still we're gonna have a couple of guys resting like Hopkins like Tate and Saquon Barkley but you know we're still gonna have like Godwin and um, Jameson Crowder and all these guys out here and one of the guys you'll notice out here is Jake Paulson the tight end now he was the second of two tight ends we drafted in last season's draft. As we have Taysom Hill with the spin move being fearless out there. We had Jeremy Rucker, but for preseason, as we throw a dime to Chris Godwin, who battles for the touchdown, we're going to see what Jake Paulson brings to the offense. Jake Paulson is way faster than Rucker. I believe he has eight more speed. So from 78 speed to 85. And that might be a big enough difference to where... I think Paulson might be a better fit for our offense. You know, the way we try to spread the field out and, you know, basically, yeah, we like that play, that play right there where we're just trying to spread things out. I just <laughs> threw a bad <laughs> throw there. So that's something we definitely got to take out. But it's preseason, so, you know, I'm, like, trying stuff out. I'm realizing that Devin Bush is not really a guy we need to mess with. But if we can manipulate Devin Bush, that would be fine. And Albert Wilson does just that. Please, like, that is where I was like, all right, Albert Wilson might be worth keeping around. Chris Godwin is worth keeping around. So we're going to have Chris Godwin for a full season along with DeAndre Hawkins. And then, you know, we'll have to see. Crowder's going to be the wide receiver number three out there. So I don't know exactly how many targets he's going to get out of that. But, um, yeah. So we give up a touchdown here. This is... Kind of a turning point for myself because as soon as I gave up this touchdown here to um, 
Calceretta. I, I know I botched his name again, so I, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> my, my apologies. I, I know I messed it up, but I can't see his name right now, so I can't really envision how to say it right. What I do know right now is Taysom Hill in that read. Oh, man, Taysom Hill's looking nice. Kenny and Drake's looking nice. Things are looking all gravy for us. But, yeah, the way I blew that coverage just now is the same thing I did in the Super Bowl. So I, I realize I have this tendency where, you know, what – my safeties, I like to bite down immediately, and when you're using the deep middle of the field, not a smart idea, because if someone's on a go route, you're toast, so, um, something we're just gonna cut out of the defense, right, like, something that I gotta work on myself, because that was part of what really killed us in that Super Bowl, because we had any chance of coming back, I gave up that deep pass, you know, and the weird thing about the way we played in the playoffs is the main thing I tried to do in the playoffs was, you know, not, you know, be too ambitious and not go for the home run plays every single time, especially passing, and try to just chill out and play smart. And what do we do in the final two games of the playoffs? Through a combined seven interceptions. So, you know, being conservative and cool didn't work, so we might as well just come out guns blazing for season five. So that's, you know, our mentality for season five here is to just, you know, have some fun and, you know, Really just let loose. So defensively, you know, my goal defensively is to not be on the field too long. Like, I don't I don't want to be on 10 play drives that last, like, seven minutes. So, you know, we'll try to wrap up drives a little bit quicker. Offensively, you know, we're just going to throw some crazy passes. We're going to run around with Taysom Hill if the option presents itself. And just try to have fun with this thing because, you know, I think we played a little bit too uptight in the playoffs. And, you know, yeah, we, we won. A couple of games, but we pulled games out of our butt that we should not have won, to be quite frank. I don't know. I still don't know how we won either of those playoff games. I told my opponents, nine times out of ten, like, I'm losing one of those games. It just happened to be a one out of ten time where I just somehow, someway managed to pull out the victory. So, once again, we got a back and forth affair in the playoffs. So, we just get a touchdown to Jamison Crowder. Now, Taysom Hill with the touchdown pass to Chris Godwin. Once again... Taysom Hill, do and Taysom Hill has really been devastating the Steelers out here. He has about six rushes. He has a touchdown pass now. So, I mean, I don't know how many times we're actually going to be using Taysom Hill. But, I mean, I want to use him a couple of times per game, man. Like, we had Mohamed Sanu in the Wildcat. But I really just, you know, tried to limit the Mohamed Sanu Wildcat stuff because, you know, I wasn't sure exactly how much I should trust his passing and all that. And Mohamed Sanu wasn't the fastest guy anyways to have him Wildcat running the read option. But, I mean, hell, Taysom Hill, he can pass the ball. So, you know, it's a legitimate, you know, catch-22 for the defense to try to figure out what to do. So, um, fun stuff all around. So, yeah, we have one more game left in the preseason. Not going to show you guys too much of this one. It's going to be week four against the Seattle Seahawks. And the starters only play one week in season four. And then it's like backups for the rest of the way. You guys can't see the stats all around. You guys see Chris Godwin, man. Six catches, 174 yards. So that dude really is the truth, man. Like, that's one guy I'm really excited to use in this season and see what he brings to the table. Derek Brown, man. Four sacks. Derek Brown really turned things up late in the season. Ever since that week 17, like, regular season game against the Cincinnati Bengals when he was playing like the best player on the field when we were on the defense event. Well, besides Caden Stearns, but... <laughs> You know, <laughs> um, still, Derrick Brown's really been lighting things up. So I'm excited to see what Derrick Brown can bring to the table. Along with, of course, just this monster defense on Miami. All the stars we had. And we added one more superstar in Jamison Crowder on the offensive side. So what you'll notice is this game is a matchup against our former backup quarterback, Desmond Ritter. Remember, we traded him to the Seattle Seahawks. So Ritter's actually going to be the guy at the helm for this entire thing. And we actually do have Khalil Tate in the game. I was like, you know what? Let's give Khalil Tate a quarter just to see, you know, what's going on out here. And by the way, one thing I did not mention as Tate throws a dime here, Khalil Tate has become an X factor in this CFM now. So that's definitely something to look forward to for Season 5, something we can have some fun with. Um... I believe he has, like, Hot Route Master as a superstar ability. So, you know, we're going to be trying to throw some dimes with Tate in this final season. D-Hop also in. So we actually have everybody in the game right now. Stearns is in the game. Everybody but Saquon Barkley for this one quarter. So we can learn a little bit. Like, a play like that, I probably should have pass led away from the coverage but I just kind of threw it straight and the safety gets the interception so um kudos to Carl Joseph we'll work on that though as ooh Ritter just gets it off and nearly throws pick number two of the quarter to 
Jerome Baker who gets the sack. So, you know, using guys like Jerome Baker and Raekwon McMillan, I want to kind of use, I want to, I want people to really fear Jerome Baker and McMillan as guys that, you know, could be blitzing, could be dropping back. I feel like that's something we didn't really take advantage of, you know, because Jerome Baker is probably like, you know, one, one of the best blitzing linebackers to have on a roster. And we don't really take advantage of that enough. It's not really my style, but we'll maybe mess around with it. Also, someone that might be earning playing time in the regular season is safety Adrian Colbert, the former Minnesota Viking, I believe. He was our backup last season, but I think this season, like the way he's playing in preseason, man, I feel like we got to find ways to get him in. Maybe as like a slot defender, like instead of having a slot like a nickel corner, we just throw Adrian Colbert in there. Or maybe we even start him over Ricardo Allen. I'm not sure because Colbert is not bad, man. He's like a decent overall as... Oh, man, Butterfield and Jakeem Grant have not had a good connection in the, the preseason. I don't know why. That's a great connection with Bobby. Actually, no, that's Nicholas Morrow. But either way, that's a Seattle Seahawks and not a Miami Dolphins. So this game has been quite the defensive battle as the second safety of the game occurs. And that was the seventh overall pick, Noah Sewell, up the middle. And you see Sewell. We're kind of using Sewell in a way we're going to try to use Jerome Baker. So you see, like, you know, it looks like, you know, we're dropping back in the coverage. We just blitz them up the middle. Like, kind of on a delay blitz, something. Something we'll try. I don't know why I'm telling you guys this. Because when I tell you guys this, like, I'm cool with that. But, like, you know, people in the league would just watch this and be like, oh, that's that's cool. Write it down in the notepad. <laughs> but, um, I mean, hey, they can, they can uh, find a way to dot us up. So be it, man. <laughs> so, you see Ritter out here struggling a little bit. We are a couple of first downs away from putting this game away. Really, it was one first down, and then I threw the interception. And with the Seahawks in field goal range, we might actually have OT in the final preseason game, which is the last thing I want. So, hopefully, you know, we can get a stop here, which we do on third down. Noah Sewell once again. Maybe, maybe Noah's trying to earn himself some playing time. I don't know. So, third down and 11 from our own end zone. Butter! Oh, Jay Butterfield. So throughout the preseason, I actually, when I was playing these games, I gave Jay Butterfield a nickname that I cannot repeat to you guys. Like, it was Butter something, but I'm not going to tell you guys because this dude, he was pretty bad in the preseason. Like, the amount of open passes that he missed, man, it was bad. But um, <laughs> thankfully, preseason is done. So after we finish up preseason, we go to the regular season, and the regular season kicks off with... A Super Bowl rematch for the second time in a row in the CFM. We have a Super Bowl rematch on opening night. Miami Dolphins versus New York Giants. Week one, I will see you guys there. We're going to try to get our revenge on the Giants. Leave a like on the video if you guys, I mean, if you stuck around for 22 minutes of preseason, God bless your soul. Leave a like on the video so we can account, like, we can do a head count. <laughs> Subscribe for more Man 20 gameplays, and I will catch you guys next time. Thank you, as always, for watching and supporting your Miami Dolphins even in the preseason.